paintings here are pastel. It is the only medium that I have ever used. I found it on my very first art class and haven't strayed from it ever. Um, it's to me the most beautiful of all mediums. So I think, well, why would I want to change? I don't. There's so much that can be done to it. And over the years, the manufacturers have given us so many little jewels to play with in color choices and whether a pastel is hard or is it soft. So now I can do anything that I want to do with pastel and even make it look like an oil painting. All of the men and boys that are on this side are people that I have been in contact with in some way. From the African boys that we met on a trip to Nairobi. Kenya. In Africa. Kenya. Kenya. <laughs> Kenya, sorry. Okay. And uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> my husband's going to help me out. <laughs> and the key painting over here of the Vietnam Wall. That has been a very special painting uh, showing the reflections of all the people that were behind us. Um, a couple of the little boys over there are from um, the George Ranch Battle Reenactment. Re and I just took candid photos of them, so it was my pleasure to be able to paint them. A lot of the other men, um, the, the guy from Fort Ticonderoga on a trip to that great fort in New York. But the women, I don't know if everybody knows yet, but they are all the same woman. One model posed for all of the paintings. This is a subject that she would like to be and uh, does a lot of research into the life. We both research the life of the painting, of the, of the woman that she's portraying. She shops on eBay, uh, gets all of the costumes together, and she comes to my house for a photo shoot totally in, in character. Her makeup is the vintage that era that we are portraying so that even the makeup that she uses is authentic to that time period. Every single thing that we've done has just been from an, our soul, my soul. Um, it's hard to just become a person. You actually have to live. I actually research every single character and I know the ins and outs of every person in these paintings. And I, that helps me to actually become that character. We were going to do maybe half a dozen and have a pop-up exhibition and that was it. Well, of course, the idea grew. And what we were going to do initially was to recreate classic poses from old-time Hollywood actresses. And that's a couple of them, one of Gable the one of Jean Harlow, those are, if you Google it, you'd be able to see that that is a recreation of a pose. We were also going to do all of the paintings in black and white. And for me, that was rather impossible to do. My hand wanted to reach for the color. And I couldn't do the black and white. Even the one, the vamp over here, that is a the black with the white fur around her. I had to start that one in color and then tone that color down with a lighter tones to make it appear black and white. Evolved from the Hollywood actress theme because as we started into that, we, we found that these were not just pretty faces, Hollywood actresses but they were women who had a story to tell through their face, through their eyes. And the paintings became about emotion, the feelings that were inside these women, what they needed to tell. And we evolved that idea even into <clears throat> the 1500s with the Elizabethan era, the lady in red in the back on up to one of the more modern day looks, and that is the painting that's all the way to the right, the kind of golden look, 
where um, today's woman, she's got her chin lifted, she's looking forward, she has confidence in herself, everything is golden. One other thing that I would like to say, I think, is that on the center painting, the one that is very big in the, in the white dress, where I just, the model came, she had a black wig, her dress was black, the cloth covering her, her legs and draping to the floor, that was black. Yes. But I was inspired really by Renee Zellweger in her role in Chicago. And I wanted to have that lighter feeling. Um, so, you know, as an artist, you don't have to keep, you don't have to paint what, you're, what you see. You can, you can revise it. It's, it's, it's your canvas, it's your color choices. So we, I reverted it to, to white. And uh, to give it a little bit of sparkle, that is glitter glue, if you look closely at it. And the glitter glue, yes, <clears throat> it sticks on top of pastel. I, I did have to experiment a little bit, but yeah, it sticks. No problem with that. Another thing that um, for pastel, it is really difficult. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit difficult to use metal leaf, gold leaf, silver leaf. And yet that was my challenge. I wanted to be able to do it. Uh, six by eight that's got silver leaf on it. <clears throat> I found a way to do it. It's a lot of fun. Have a, someone come in with a little sparkle in the background. Is that pastel or? It is pastel. Um, and I have two ways of doing that for the background. One is that I have some pastels made by Sennelier that are iridescent or pearlescent, both ways. And then there is another product for pastel artists um, called pan pastels. They're little round tubes and they're almost, uh, they, they re remind me of makeup because they're creamy kind of and they're applied with a sponge. That's pan pastels and they have quite a line of iridescent and metallic um, uh, paints. And so in, in the tango painting, um, that is with pan, pan pastels in the background. And do I have a favorite? Let me ask myself that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. do you have a yeah. favorite? Yeah. Uh, I have a favorite. It would be hard to choose for me. I can't exactly call it my favorite, but I call it my signature painting because, I don't know, it went together so easily and it has a lot more emotion in it than some of the others. And that is the one that I call our song.